Just across the Pennines from the city of York is the equally historic city of Lancaster. In the centre of Lancaster is the Grand Theatre, one of the oldest theatres in the country. It goes back to the end of the 18th century, and it has a very long history of paranormal activity. In her prime, the great actress Sarah Siddons played here. Tonight, the star billing goes to Al Jolson. Here at the Grand in Lancaster, which is 30, over 200 years old now, I, uh, I, I had a strange feeling. I mean, obviously, our ghosts in this, there's got to be ghosts in a theatre that old. But I had a strange feeling when I was doing the jobs. I just felt like a, a cold shiver, as if someone had walked over my grave, sort of thing. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, I just felt that there was something there at that particular moment. And if it's, uh, if it's the ghost of the theatre, it might be arguing with Al Jolson. Or I, I could see a fight start. <laughs> the experience described by Al Jolson or Steve Keane, to give him his real name, is by no means uncommon. Over the years, many members of the audience, as well as players on the stage, have described unusual inexplicable experiences. Many of them, strangely, talk of apparitions that seem to float in the air, well above the existing floor level. At first hearing, that seems to make them stranger than ever. But as it happens, there is a very practical explanation. The old building is different to what uh, it is now. Uh, the um, pit floor was at a higher level, and of course, the circle, you, you had the Georgian-type boxes along the sides and the back. So, of course, if there was anybody um, haunting, you might say, then they would be walking along the old level. The time that I think that I had an experience was when I was working on a costume play, and in order to see the effect as it was on the stage, I walked through the auditorium to about halfway up um, the aisle and turned round and saw a lady, an uh, indeterminate age, who was walking between me and the stage. And I said, what are you doing there? And at that moment, she's faded. It wasn't like a puff of smoke. She faded like an old photograph fade until there was nothing there. And I found it very upsetting. I have not spoken to anybody about it except one member of the Footlights. We were doing the Taming of the Shrew at the time and this lady was certainly dressed in a period type costume but of the wrong period and this is why she struck me as being in the way and I was annoyed and my tone must have been very annoyed. Um, there was one other thing I later realized that in fact she wasn't walking on the floor she was neither at the height of the stage nor at the height of the auditorium. It was somewhere in between. But I was concentrating on the costume rather than anything else. Melanie Warren is a very well-known paranormal investigator. She's taken a great interest in the goings-on at the Grand. Tozer's evidence impressed me because it matches several other stories that I've heard. In the 1950s, Pat Phoenix, who was um, an actress, was working here, she saw a similar person and the lady disappeared in much the same way that Toza described. And also, um, Amara Jackson, who saw a lady on the stage, um, it seems to be the same woman that everyone's seeing. I think Toza's um, testimony impresses me because she's such a strong lady in herself, you know, and she really is not keen on talking about the experience that she had. Um, she only came on the program and talked about it because she was convinced that she saw something, even though she can't explain it. I have personally never had any experience of ghosts. I, don't, I can't say that I believe in ghosts. I know that this was something that I may have imagined because it was so fleeting. But uh, no, I'm not that sort of person. I'm extremely realistic, really. As we've mentioned in her heyday, the famous 18th century actress Sarah Siddons played at the Grand. She came to Lancaster at least partly because her brother-in-law ran the theatre. Legend has it that her spirit remains to haunt the place. We called in a very experienced psychic medium, Joan Norton, to see if she could establish contact with anything that might be historically verified. We gave her no warning of where she was going. But I feel particularly drawn to that behind me. 
to the um, that corner of our strong vibrations. Over here, um, different feeling again. Uh, I feel as if something's coming down on me here, as if something's... Well, Joan didn't make contact with Sarah Siddons, but there seemed to be some connection with the theatre's distant history. She's come up with a few bits of evidence which do fit the facts. She mentioned, for example, that she got a feeling of a fire here. Now, this entire theatre, uh, the interior of it, was completely destroyed and much of the roof went as well when the, there was a fire at the end of the last century and the place has been completely rebuilt. She also said she felt that there was something um, below the theatre, downstairs. She wasn't to know that in its original form there were actually dwelling houses underneath the theatre. Um, she also said that her strongest feeling was on the left side of the stage. The names very significantly attached to the theatre are Walter and Alexander. She came up with one name, Walter, and a very brief look through the history has shown that there was a Walter. She said that Walter was connected with the running of the building. There was a Walter. Edmund Sharp took over the building in 1843. He worked wonders for the building. He died in 1877, and he passed on the building to his two sons and another gentleman called Walter. This was in 1877. Again, it's the Victorian era we're looking at. All the evidence that's coming in seems to suggest that whatever is going on here dates from the Victorian era. Theatres, of course, everywhere have a long tradition of connection with the paranormal. The life of these buildings is suffused with emotion and passion and high drama, as the actors strut and fret their lives upon the stage. It isn't difficult to believe that here, if anywhere, the very fabric of the building absorbs some of the emotion that is expended down the years. It is classical stone tape theory. This is a theatre. The emotion is high. I reckon a lot of it must dissipate into the, the vastness behind you. So. One theory of haunts is... Uh, one which may be called, for want of a better phrase, the, the, the stone tape theory, where you have to postulate that in the case of a typical haunt, some very emotion-laden scene or some very important scene from the point of view of the humans who took part in it has somehow become registered on the environment, not necessarily within a house, maybe even outside, and that it looks, it's almost like a sort of psychic video that has been created. And someone who comes along who is sensitive enough to act as a psychic video player will actually play that tape and see the figures or perhaps even hear voices or hear sounds and it is nothing, it is nothing to do with the people who originally were there. They're no longer there. It's simply a record. I'm not convinced that ghosts are the spirits of dead people. I tend to think that they're more likely to be recordings on the atmosphere or emotions trapped in the fabric of the building. It's a very difficult theory to explain, but that's the simplest um, we can come to it. Often happens after we've done a costume play or we're reenacting something in period the appearances get intensified. Where flowers, are flowers, bloom in the spring. It's part of well, our Josephine could scarcely be described as costume drama, perhaps. But it isn't hard to imagine the ringing tones, this old tin panelli number, seeping into the bricks and mortar and adding yet another layer to the emotional fabric of the grand old theatre. Over up the golden gate, California, here I am.